I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Welcome to another version of getting you ready for the Security Plus certification exam and bettering yourself in your cybersecurity career. Today we're going to talk about network intrusion detection systems and network intrusion prevention systems. Let's talk about it a little bit. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. What's an NIPS? What's an NIDS? Uh, what's signature based and what is heuristics or behavioral based? There's a little bit, little bit of difference between the two of those. What do we know about inline versus passive? What is in band versus out of band? What do we know about rules? And then what about analytics, false positives and false negatives? Let's talk about each of those a little bit. So according to NIST, and this is a little bit of a modified definition because they don't have an exact definition of network intrusion prevention systems. But it's software that performs packet sniffing and network traffic analysis to identify and prevent suspicious activity and record relevant information. Thing about NIPS, and the big thing is that obviously the difference is the P and the D. The prevention system is active. And we'll talk, well, next slide obviously we go into the detection system, but the prevention system will actually actively make changes to your network to prevent the attack. So an NIPS monitors network traffic for anomalies. It detects and prevents specific attacks according to defined rules, and it can modify other security devices. And obviously we'll look at NIDSs, and it does not prevent it should not say that. It does not prevent specific attacks. So NIDS is software that performs packet sniffing and network traffic analysis to identify suspicious activity and record relevant information. It monitors network traffic for anomalies. It detects specific attacks according to defined rules. It doesn't prevent them. That's a mistake on the slide. It does not prevent specific attacks. It just detects them. That's the biggest thing between an NIDS and an NIPS, or NIDS and a DIPS. With prevention, it actually modifies other security devices like firewalls and routers and things like that to block attacks that it knows about. An NIDS, or NIDS, cannot modify other security devices. That's how it, it's just monitoring. It's monitoring and it's reporting. So it'll send log reports. It'll send alerts. It'll do things like that. An NIPS will also send alerts and it'll also send log events, but it doesn't prevent the attack. That's the biggest thing. Both NIDs and NIPs can be signature based. This is like your antivirus. It's based on signatures or patterns. The system must have a signature of something it knows as bad to be able to react to it. It's got to know what bad looks like and it does that through a signature file. So someone defines in a file what an attack looks like. So if we say something like the Sasser worm looks a specific way, we can define that. And if a NIDS, an IPS system, either one, sees it on the network, it can react either by detecting or preventing it. These are obviously faster to implement, and they have low false positive rates. They're faster to implement because once you define the, the security rules in there, once you define those signatures, then the system is ready to go. Behavioral-based, on the other hand, has to detect things that are not normal. And to do that, it's first got to learn what normal is. So for that reason, it takes longer to implement. So it has to monitor your network. And it has to learn what your normal network traffic looks like. Once it learns what's normal, then it can find things that are not normal. And those anomalies are what it reports on. It doesn't rely on signatures, so it can be faster in detecting new threats. So in signature-based, uh, somebody has to write the signature. It has to be pushed out to all the IDS systems. And then it can react. It can report back in, or it can be preventive. With a behavioral-based system, it knows what normal looks like. So when a new vulnerability comes out, then the system will know that that's not normal. That thing is not normal. Obviously, if you change the way you're doing things, if you change maybe your hours or you move people remote, that could throw a lot of false positives for a behavioral-based system. So there, we have to worry about that. Heuristic based are a bit in between signature-based and behavioral-based. They use artificial intelligence, or AI, to detect threats. They use the logarithms to define if signature is bad, and they just kind of live in this space between the signature-based 
and a behavioral base. They're kind of the best of both worlds. Anomalies we're talking about, this is something that is not normal or out of the normal activity you do. They're similar, these systems are similar to behavioral in the way that the anomaly-based systems must learn what is normal and then those anomalies are differences from what is normal. Some anomalies can be defined and implemented faster because it's not only learning from the system but we're telling it things as well. We're telling it that these specific systems maybe are Windows based and if we see an Apple attack against those systems we know something is weird. Somebody is trying to run Apple commands on a Windows system or Windows commands on an Apple device or a Linux device we know that's not right and that's kind of anomaly. That's uh, anomalous traffic and we can report on that or we can prevent that. We can act on that activity. Then we talk, next we talk about how these devices are implemented. And we can implement them inline or we can implement them in a passive way. In inline traffic passes through the IDS or the IPS in that way, it, it can act on it quicker. And normally we see IPSs, well, we see both implemented this way uh, because traffic is going through the device. Passive device really sits off the network traffic and just observes it. And we see this a lot more with IDSs, but we can see it either way. So if we see this normal communication chain between the firewall and say a, a computer, in an inline IPS or IDS, the device sits right there in between the traffic. It's going to see everything going through. It's going to be able to react because it sits on the traffic path itself. In a passive implementation of an IDS or IPS, the device is not in line, but it's connected like to a tap or something like that, and it monitors the traffic going by. So it doesn't actually sit in line. It's connected to the, the network channel and it monitors the network channel. So the other thing we see is how do we communicate between the controller and the IDSs or IPSs? We can have in-band communications or out-of-band communications. So in-band communicates with the controller on the same network as the communication flow. So there, there's kind of one network cable that's going through the device and to the other connected devices. Uh, we're using the same one communication path that we're using for our normal communications to communicate with the controller for the IDS and IPSs. Out of band uses a totally separate network to communicate. So when we want to communicate with the IDS or the IDS wants to communicate back with the controller, in band is going to use that same network that's used for network traffic to communicate and out of band it's going to use a communication path that's a totally separate network. So that does help define that a bit. And then rules. The rules are what make up the actions that the IDS or the IPS is going to take. Rules help determine if an event has occurred. Rules depends on the type of sensor we're using, behavioral, heuristic, signature-based, or anomaly. And rules define what the, the sensor will detect, and in some cases, like prevention systems, what the sensor will react to. So we define the rules. We say if specific actions look like this. If you see this type of activity going across the network, then you'll know that's this type of attack. So if we see, you know, the evidence of, say, a denial of service attack, then we can know, we know if these specific things happen and the IDS or IPS sees that, then we'll know that that a type of attack is going on. So we have to define rules and they can be very complex. And a lot of times, uh, larger organizations will subscribe to services that provide those rules, but you can write them yourself. You can tailor them specific to your organization. That thing about analytics, once we get all of this data that's coming from the IDS and the IPS, uh, we have to think about what we're going to do with it. Obviously, we're going to log it. Maybe we're going to send it to a SIEM or security event, an incident management system. Obviously, all this information comes in, even if it's not being acted on immediately by a, like an IPS or an IDS. 
It can assist in the detection of advanced persistent threats, zero days, or indicators of compromise. So we can compile this stuff, we can use it for analytics, we can define things at a later time. Um, we can use that analytics for near real-time reaction, uh, both in IDS, when people have to react to it, or IPS, when the system itself is reacting to the attack. False positive is a finding that's shown to be a violation of a rule, but it's not, right? So it's showing up as a finding on the report. The IDS or IPS found a violation, but it really is not. So a computer, here's an example, a computer that alerts that it has a specific virus, but it doesn't really have the virus. That's a false positive. We think something is happening, or we think there's an attack on the network, but it's not. It's just specific things happen. It maybe is just somebody's doing something they haven't done before, maybe a heuristics or a behavioral-based system. It's not really an attack, it's just something different has happened. The alarms went off, but when we investigate it, really was not an attack. So it came up, it was, it was shown as a false positive. We don't, we, we don't want these to happen a lot, but they're, they're going to. But worse than a false positive, a false negative. And that's when a violation happens, but it's not detected. So in this example, a computer does not alert that it has a virus, but it does. This is when your IDS or IPS does not alert on an attack, but there's an attack going on. There's a lot of reasons why these happen. False positives are bad. False negatives are worse. False positives, something, something was, was, an alarm was sent off, but it really, it wasn't an attack. So we can fix that. The false negative is an attack happened and our system didn't detect it. So that's obviously in the security world, that's worse. It's something's happening and you don't know about it. So that's the rundown, what you need to know about IDSs and IPSs. You should know this for your general security knowledge. And if you're gonna sit for the Security Plus certification exam, you need to know it for that. So as always, I'm Jim with Cyber Recon. Love you to subscribe, comment, hit the bell to be notified. Be safe out there and we'll see you next time.